Bismillahirrahmanirrahim in the name of God who is most compassionate and most merciful. On this day, August 23rd, 2016 in Newark at 7.45 p.m., the Delaware Council on Global and Muslim Affairs is a community-based think tank that is committed to fight for social justice, defend civil rights for all, oppose bigotry and intolerance, and to mainstream Delaware Muslims through political engagement, interfaith dialogues, symposiums, and town hall meetings. In this age of Islamophobia, we are determined to ensure that Delaware Muslims are not silenced, marginalized, or disenfranchised. We have now embarked on a multi-pronged strategy to achieve our goals. In December last year, we hosted a regional conference on social justice, which was keynoted by Governor Jack Markel and included among its long list of speakers, uh, Representative John Carney, uh, Senator Brian Townsend, County Executive Tom Gordon. We also hosted several interfaith and public safety conferences. Governor Markel, County Executive Gordon, and Senator Townsend have attended and supported all of them. We have, through our meet and greet events and community briefs, introduced candidates running for office to the community and facilitated many useful dialogues. In the past, one week alone, we have hosted one of the most appreciated congressional debates in this election cycle. An incredibly successful symposium on embracing pluralism in partnership with the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church and conducted a community-wide consultation to select our slate for endorsement. Senator Townsend attended the symposium and his presence was especially motivational for the young Muslim ambassadors of Delaware who were thrilled that he came and listened to their entire panel. Before I announce the results of the community's deliberations, the Arabic word for this is shura, let me share our process. The process was complicated, it had five steps. First, we met individually with all the candidates uh, that reached out to us and responded to us when we reached out to them. This is critical. We met with all the candidates who reached out to us and who responded to us when we reached out to them. There were candidates who simply did not respond and have still not responded and still not reached out to us. We then wrote short briefs to introduce them to the community. We invited the candidates to attend various functions like fast-breaking ceremonies in Ramadan, to eat celebrations, to meet the community. We also hosted several meet and greet events. Many of the hosts are here and I thank them for their hospitality and generosity. Uh, Mustafa Tanjar hosted a fundraiser for us and a meet and greet session. Dr. Mohammed Nyas, who is also here, kicked it off. In fact, he was the first one who trusted Delaware Council, and I'm very, very grateful to him for hosting our first fundraiser and meet and greet session. We hosted a debate for the congressional candidates. This was a sustained exercise in exploring the values and politics of the candidates themselves. Our debate was uni unique because it also explored the candidates' approach to foreign policy, unlike the other debates in the state. Uh, we conducted an exit poll at the debate. We had about 253 people attend the debate, and 109 of them took the exit poll. And the exit poll was not just about the candidates who were debating, but we looked at people's opinion across the slate. Uh, because we got only 50% response, we went ahead and did a community-wide email survey of the Muslim community of Delaware. We did it two days in a row, and we got about 59 responses from the email. And then after that, we conducted telephone conversations with leaders of Muslim organizations who are prominent, who are engaged with the community, uh, uh, the Quranic term for these people are Urul al Amr, people who enjoy authority in the community. We spoke to several of them by phone, and uh, we not only took their opinion, we actually did a poll on the slate and we also took their advice. And then finally, we had a council meeting right here yesterday where we collected at the polls. There were people here who had not participated in any of the process, they also came and voted. So ultimately, we managed to get 159 votes for all the slate for the community. But we must also realize that this process was also educational for the community itself. I mean, one of the things that I've been trying to impress 
is that the real elections are on September 13th, as far as Delaware is concerned, then we can all go on vacation on the 14th uh, after celebrating Eid, probably on the same day. So it, so it was also a learning process for all of us, but also for the community. Our endorsements today are a culmination of this entire process. As community, we have judged the candidates on their values, for the issues they care for, and the outreach that they have done to the community. These are the three things. What are their values? What do these candidates believe in? Can we support their values? What are the issues do that these candidates pursue? Are we, as an ethical community, willing to work with these candidates on those issues? And the third criteria, did they hang with us? Did they reach out to us? Did they respond to us? Or did they ignore us? That was an important criteria. Those who avoided us while some national leaders came to go to us will not enjoy our support. Those who stood with us yesterday and today, we stand with them today and tomorrow. Those who avoided us, we will not stand with them. Those who stood with us yesterday and today, we will stand with them today and tomorrow. Our country is going through a very critical phase. The bipartisanship necessary for good governance does not exist. And the political environment has become very vitriolic and divisive. The international atmosphere is fraught with danger and threats to our national security abound. Our economy is doing well, and we need a strong leader who has experience and is well qualified to lead us in the challenging times. We feel that Hillary Clinton is the only qualified candidate running for president, and we are with her. This is a sad day that in the world, historically the oldest democracy and the greatest experience in freedom, we have only one person qualified to be president running for the office of president. She will lead our country with responsibility and maturity, and we endorse her for the good of America. The state of Delaware's economy is actually being worse than the national economy. We are losing business to other states, and confidence in Delaware is diminishing in the eyes of investors and businesses. The rise of crime in some parts of the state is also hurting the entire state. We believe that John Carney is able and committed to addressing Delaware's challenges and will make an excellent governor. His cooperation with Delaware Council and his outreach to Muslims of Delaware assures us that he will be governor for all Delawareans. He has assured us and we believe that he will be governor for all Delawareans. We endorse John Carney without hesitation. Delaware is fortunate to have a great set of leaders competing to represent them in Congress. Both Lisa Blunt Rochester and Sean Barney are wonderful individuals and sincere in their commitment to Delaware. But Muslims of Delaware have worked with Brian Townsend for so long on so many issues and events that we think of him as one of our own. His inclusion of Delaware Muslims, his outreach to Delaware Muslims, and his support for Delaware Muslims is unmatched by any other candidate. The community is grateful to him for playing an important role in getting both houses of Delaware to pass a resolution recognizing Islamic holidays. Brian Townsend is a real leader who combines enormous energy, commitment to progressive and ethical values, openness to all regardless of race, religion, or national origin, and a burning desire for public service. He is also the only candidate with elected legislative experience, and we need a very open yet skillful legislator in Congress to navigate the dangerous partisan waters of Washington, D.C. Brian has had a very successful tenure as Delaware Senator, but what we admire most of all his various achievements are his leadership on extending driving privileges for undocumented Delawareans, closing the loopholes in background checks on gun purchases, extending a second chance to felons who have served their time and prohibiting housing discrimination against the poor. All of this underscores his support for the marginalized, and it tells us that he will not leave us behind when he goes to Washington. (laughs) 
We are proud of our association with him. We cherish his support for us. And today, we stand with him firmly like the rock of Gibraltar. We endorse Brian Townsend for Congress from the bottom of our hearts. <laughs> Thomas Gordon has been a very good friend and supporter of the community. Devalawe Muslims have several mosques and Islamic schools in the county, and he has been an incredibly considerate in his dealings with the community. He has shown leadership in reaching out to us on matters of security. He has made us feel safe and safe to deal with the county police. This is very important. He has made us feel safe in our homes, in our mosques, in our institutions, and he has also made us feel safe to interact with the police and law enforcement at this time when Muslims are afraid of law enforcement because they feel that they are being scapegoated. <laughs> the many meetings we have had with him in his office, each one has served to tell us that he values us as residents of Newcastle County. In April, he gave the Muslim community of Delaware an incredible gift by issuing a proclamation that recognize Islamic holidays as part of Newcastle County's religious and spiritual heritage and call for all to extend maximum religious accommodation to Muslims. I cannot tell you how powerful that message was. It made all of us feel so welcome. And for that, we are grateful to you, Tom God. We are grateful to him and we endorse him enthusiastically for County Executive of Newcastle County. <laughs> Bethany Hall long has served our state and my university with dedication and distinction. She has led the fight to transform and expand addiction and mental health services in Delaware. If you look at the political environment in this country, and look at the popularity of certain leaders, I think the more we spend on mental health, the less it is. <laughs> she has been the leader on legislation, creating the SEED program that provides affordable education to Delaware College students. We applaud her support for raising minimum wage, and she is our neighbor, literally. She has reached out to us, and we support her for Lieutenant Governor of Delaware. We call upon all Delawareans to pay attention to our endorsements. Come September 13, it is critical that we make the right choices for our county, our state, our country, and our shared future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, thank you all for all the support you've shown over the past many, many months, but more importantly, for all that you have done and are doing for Delaware. First, my apologies that my voice is a little bit hoarse. Uh, the intensity of my campaign is something my voice cannot keep up with. Um, it means so much tonight. I, I do want to say I saw your Facebook post earlier, and I was just scrolling through my phone, and I was a little taken aback uh, to see the photo with, of uh, Jamil. Because um, we know how hard he was working in this election cycle. We know how intensely he was advocating that people register to vote. I can only imagine what his project would have been after the August 20th deadline to register. Um, he gave up his seat every single time for me. Um, he was just, I think, the best example of the community. And it is sad that all the progress the community continues to make, um, that he is not here to see it. But he was such a big part of it. And I think that one reason the endorsement means so much to me is because of how absolutely fantastic and inspirational it is to see the community coming together at this time in our state and country's history. The amount of talent, the amount of conviction, and the amount of kindness in Delaware's Muslim community is inspiring. And at a time when clearly it's important for people to step forward and speak out and talk about inclusivity and talk about equality and talk about opportunity and talk about hard work and talk about family values. And if people don't do that, we see what happens. We see which shadows overcome the light. Here in Delaware, you have done so much over the past 12 plus months 
Um, and there's so much more to go. And to be there with you every step of the way truly is uh, and has been and will continue to be an honor. Um, your courage in doing so is something that helps drive me on. And I truly, truly would be honored to represent your community in Congress to talk about these major national and international issues. I look forward to so many conversations to come. And thank you deeply, deeply from the bottom of my heart for your support uh, of my candidacy. Thank you. Thank you, my good friend and professor. But I'm very humbled and deeply honored to be selected for being endorsed. I've, I've got much more from the Muslim community than I gave. To, to find this rich community and to be a part of it, um, it's, it's just very humbling. Uh, you have such wonderful families, such rich community, and to think that uh, you know, we were, we were able to create such a great partnership. It certainly enhances Newcastle County. But the most important thing you can do, I think, it's very, we're very honored to have the endorsement, is to show your numbers in the primary on the 13th, whoever you vote for. They can know those that missed this will be here next year because you're a strong, powerful force. And it'll mean a lot. You know, in a democracy, everything is mounted out on politics. And when they see the numbers that are going to vote in September, nobody will miss the application to go through this endorsement process. And I'm just very proud that I was smart enough to know early on the value of this community and the richness of this community and what you bring to Newcastle County and the state of Delaware. And I said I get much more out of it than I was able to give back. But thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so very much. It really is humbling, and I'm sure those others who are present uh, who were endorsed tonight probably have shared with you how very special this is. Um, as someone who is looking forward to serving you in a statewide capacity now, having been a state senator and have had the opportunity to break bread with you and to uh, spend time and to look forward to understanding and working on diversity and inclusion statewide. And those issues that matter, as you mentioned, family, workplace, our children's future. And I have to applaud you for the education that you give our children here in the center. I watch daily as your neighbor. I am amazed um, at the outcomes that you've produced with these young men and women. And I know our future is bright. So whether it's uh, at the national level, the county level, or myself at the state level. Uh, it is my honor. I look forward to working with you on addressing those issues that affect all of us as Americans and all of us as Delawareans. And so with that, I say salam alaikum and thank you. <laughs> thank you.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Good evening to all of you. Uh, on behalf of the Delaware Council on Global and Muslim Affairs, I would like to welcome you all. Uh, inshallah, this is the first of many, many meetings you're going to be attending in this room. This is going to serve as Delaware Council's uh, conference room where we do intend to do lots of policy discussions and briefs, etc., uh, in the ensuing future. Uh, today we are going to attempt something for the Muslim community of the United States of America, at least it's a historical moment uh, that a Muslim organization is going to uh, endorse candidates from federal level to local level. We have been a, a community which has frequently endorsed presidents, but I'm not aware of organizations which have done endorsements across the slate. And especially in this environment, it is of paramount importance that this is happening in Delaware. Uh, the, the way we are going to proceed today is we're going to achieve uh, three things. We will do the formal endorsement. I normally don't write, but this is written, so I will read it out so that I don't make any mistakes in this historical moment. The sec so we will do the endorsement. After that, we will get speeches from the endorsed candidates whatever they want to share. Uh, I'm recommending that they practice, inshallah, acceptance speeches. <laughs> Some of you don't need it, but why not? Uh, on this moment, I also want to recall uh, our colleague Jamil Turk, who was one of the founders, one of the three founders of, uh, of Delaware Council this moment. Since morning, I have a status on Facebook saying we would have missed Jamil. Uh, I, I really miss him a lot. He would have been through this roof. This roof would have been broken. He had so much energy. If you remember, Tom, yes, he, yes, he just b jumped up and down all the time. So without much ado, I shall begin now.